Welcome to this week's review of Gonzo's Foundation, Shadow of the Cunt. Small mention, by the way, fuck Gonzo. So before I start talking about the episode, I just gotta say one thing, definitely. What is up with Kakashi's voice? Like, when are them balls gonna drop? At this point, it's like, I think this episode takes place three years after the events of last week's episode with all the stuff that Orochimaru escaped and he was getting out of the village or whatever. And Kakashi sounds still the same. He still sounds exactly like he sounded back then. And I'm just thinking about myself like, yo, what the fuck? Like, when is this dude's balls gonna drop and we're gonna have that adult Kakashi voice? I mean, even if the original Kakashi uh, Chronicles or Kakashi Gaiden, he had the adult voice playing for the kid and at this point it's been like, yo, dude how old is he now? And he still sounds like he sounded when he was like 12 or some shit. We need that adult voice incoming immediately. Is it just me or it feels as though with this filler? It went from kind of solely focusing on Kakashi to now it's mainly a lot of it at least for the past four episodes or so is definitely to do with Yamato and his backstory and everything about him because it feels as though yet again with this week's episode it was more so about Yamato and how Danzo kind of salvaged him from that tank or whatever and it was kind of showing a little bit more of so the bond that him and Kakashi share how pretty much both of them lost a female comrade and the way Yamato was looking at it because once he found out about Rin and how Rin died he was looking at him like yo I I didn't even have an opportunity to save my friend. And he thought that Kakashi just straight up killed her because it was part of the mission. So he was looking at it like, yo, fuck you. And that's probably what made him listen to Donzo even more. I mean, it's a combination of things. You got that Donzo rescued him. So he's going to feel as though he has to have some sort of loyalty to Donzo regardless. But at the same time, it pushed him even further to go and say, yeah, I accept the mission to go and get his eye. Because he's looking at it like, well, you're a scumbag. You, you're a betrayer to your friends. So yeah, I'll kill you. Fuck it. Why not? Definitely felt like we spent a little bit too much time in the scenes with Donzo and Yamato when he was little and how he was like showing them around and showing them the ropes and kind of giving them special treatment. It was kind of like, yo, this is Kakashi Ambu not Donzo Ambu. I think this is the most time I've ever seen, like, screen time of Donzo. Like, by the end of the series, Donzo will have had more screen time than, like, half of the Konoha 11. What the fuck? That fight scene between Kakashi and Yamato, that was pretty sick. It was actually pretty dope. Like, you have him going in, he's using his Mokotone to the best of his ability, and Kakashi's still holding his own against it, so it was pretty interesting to see that fight. At the end of the day, Kakashi does have some age on him, so yeah, gave him a slight advantage, I guess, and he also has the shot in Gon, so that's probably what helped to give him the upper hand in that battle, but nonetheless, that was a pretty cool fight. That was probably one of, if not the best things about the episode, because we had, like, he accepts the mission, and then he's following Kakashi to there, and then we get, like, a lot of that backstory of him and Donzo, Yamato and Donzo, and at this point, it was like, it did not need to be put into that much depth to the point where we see, like, every little detail. It's like, why is this filler focusing so much on Donzo and Yamato? Like, Yamato stuff was kind of like, alright, it's somewhat interesting. We're getting to learn his backstory and learn a little bit more about him, and maybe that'll uh, equate to something relevant in the manga or the canon material later on, so fine, whatever, but, like, we know at this point, Donzo is responsible for everything. Donzo is the fucking little Grinch in the nighttime pinching babies in their beds. And my favorite moment of this episode was definitely when Kakashi had had enough. He was like, that's it, because Yamato crossed the line with saying, why did you kill Rin? And he just went storming in there. I didn't want to kill her. I couldn't save my friend from this Chidori. That was like the most powerful scene because everything what this episode was building up to, climax right there, was kind of like Yamato's distrust for this person. The reason partially why Yamato decided, I will go and take this eye. And then it all built up to that because they kind of have this similar bond based off what you see with the past with how Yamato lost that uh, comrade in the, in the uh, little chamber or whatever how she died and it kind of like added everything up and I think at the end of this episode it definitely showed how their friendship will you know this is like the basis of their friendship and where it all started and kind of what will slowly break Yamato slightly out of the mold of being under Donzo I mean we know in the Shippuden era that he was still an Ambu or whatnot so this isn't going to completely break the barrier but it definitely is something that will probably spark a change within Yamato so he's not completely just this cold-hearted guy. In the end of the episode, Orochi Dildo is waiting there like, hey guys, you know, I'm, I'm here, we're gonna have some fun. Overall, with this episode, I felt as though it was better than like the two combo episodes that we got last week. I felt as though it was a little bit more structured well where it gave more backstory to Yamato and Danzo, even though at this point, I, like, we've had enough backstory with Danzo and Yamato, uh, but I felt as though it was kind of focusing in again on the mission of this filler, and that's to kind of show Kakashi's pain and what he 
went through after the events of Ren and Yobito. So it kind of added a little bit more into that. And I felt as though the pacing was okay in certain areas. It got really bad with the Yamato and Donzo stuff. That's when the pacing was bad. Um, the fight scene was pretty dope. It was, you know, pretty interesting, choreographed very well. And overall, I felt as though this episode, it was a fine one. It wasn't amazing or anything like that. A lot better than last week's where it was just like, oh my fucking God, what is going on? So I will give it credit for that. Overall, I give this episode six and a half out of 10. Felt it was fine. I believe next week will be the final episode of this thriller so that's some good stuff hopefully fingers crossed and uh yeah pretty much with this episode i was like fuck donzo fuck donzo oh did i forget to say fuck donzo but let me know what you guys think first of all what the fuck is up with kakashi still having that girly voice at this age i mean at this point he should be already sounding like a manly man also what do you think about the stuff with donzo and yamato how he pretty much salvaged him deep as though that it's been explored too much already within this filler and you're just sick and done with it and how do you feel about donzo as a character but that's all i have for this review thanks for watching hope you enjoyed thumbs up for kakashi versus yamato because that was a sick fight in this episode and that was probably the starlight of the entire episode. I'm for the world and as always people, fuck Donzo.